Of course, one of the great uh, discoveries we made during the war was, was that the what we were really fighting during the war was not uh, the Germans, but uh, I was a sergeant major during the war. We were fighting our own officers. We were fighting the most representative of the ruling class who would be to send her. Uh, the class division uh, came to a very sharp edge, a very sharp point during the war. And after the war, we had to wait a little while for the provinces to start being heard. We had the, uh, the uh, phenomenon of the angry young men. Eventually, we had the phenomenon of the Beatles. Liverpool existed. Liverpool was a real place. My own town, Manchester, is a real place. And uh, this process, unfortunately, is still being bedeviled by the tendency for the metropolis uh, to regard itself as the true centre. I've always felt myself as, as a northerner, and uh, more specifically as a northern Catholic, that uh, I do not belong to the mainstream of English social life. I'm saying this now uh, perhaps a little bluntly, and uh, perhaps the, I could qualify the statement if there were time, but uh, it, it was far easier for me, as it was far easier for Joyce, perhaps, to uh, leave uh, the centre which had nurtured him and where his readership was to get out into a, into a bigger world, to get out into Europe, in fact. Uh, what uh, I worry about in the contemporary British novel is that it's not aware of Europe. It's aware of Europe as a place where you go on holiday, where you have taramusolata in some small Athenian uh, restaurant, or you go to the south of France for a holiday, for a trip. But there's no European sense in the contemporary British novel. There's a far greater European sense in the contemporary American novel. I blame various people. I think the, this whole, uh, uh, whole centralising impulse began with the Bloomsbury Group. I blame Virginia Woolf. I blame Ian Forster for the... Uh, for the, the, the sense of deprivation, this uh, spiritual uh, vacuity that you uh, find uh, emerging occasionally in very respected uh, contemporary British novelists are mostly women. See, women on the whole are better equipped uh, to be novelists than men. But men are good, as, as I think Sir Walter Scott said, the big bow wow style. He recognised in Jane Austen that there was a delicacy of approach, uh, a sense of uh, immediacies that he himself could not match. Uh, what I envy in women novelists is uh, their capacity to uh, absorb the surface of the, surface of, uh, of the world. Uh, women are more at home in the sensuous world uh, than men are. Uh, for example, uh, many men are colorblind. I am colorblind. Uh, when I have to describe a woman's wardrobe, I have to turn to my wife. Women are never colorblind and ask her, what would this woman wear on this particular occasion? D.H. Lawrence was evidently colorblind. You've only got to see what the uh, sisters wear at the beginning of Women in Love. Uh, when I lived in a British village, uh, a village in Sussex, uh, I, who was a fairly respected novelist at the time, was never asked to open the village fete. It was always left to a retired admiral. Uh, we're not ex there's no, uh, the, the, uh, the constitution of British society is such that there's, there may be a place for the poet, I don't know, there's no place for the novelist. We're still, uh, in a sense, outsiders, and I think W.H. Auden uh, saw this very clearly in his sonnet about the novelist, which of course, at my age, I can't remember, when he said that we must be dirty with the dirty, I think you said that, and suffer dully for all the wrongs of man.